Unless you're literally living under a rock, it's pretty clear to see that the world is chaotic at the moment. What has transpired with the coronavirus is a bit like shining a black light onto the hotel sheets of the United States of America. It has simply exacerbated larger systemic and societal issues that we've faced since the country's founding. Things are more polarizing than ever, and each person seems tasked with trying to find the truth in a sea of narratives and agenda. Every media source is biased, the government lies to us, and people are subjective to their own opinions and worldview. It seems that the most intelligent stance that one can take right now is simply throwing up their hands and admitting that they don't know. Unsurprisingly, the pandemic has also resulted in a mental health crisis. According to the Washington Post, almost half of Americans have reported their mental health declining, and calls to an emergency number for mental health emergencies have gone up by 1,000%. It is also an unfortunate reality that this may just be the beginning. We're headed for a Great Depression, and there are innumerable studies that demonstrate the link between poverty and mental illness. It's easy to begin to feel as though you're a passenger on a train headed for disaster, powerless to shake some sense into those who are actually driving. Let me introduce you to someone who knows that feeling more deeply than any of us can even imagine. Viktor Frankl. Originally a neurologist from Austria, from 1942 to 1945, he endured internment at both Dachau and Auschwitz concentration camps. After surviving and returning home to Vienna in 1946, he wrote, Man's Search for Meaning, over a nine-day period. In it, he details how one can find meaning in spite of suffering, as well as laying the groundwork for logotherapy, a theoretical orientation of counseling that focuses upon helping individuals answer deeper existential questions. I really cannot recommend this book enough if you're looking for something to read during quarantine. My explanations simply cannot do it justice, so I'm going to read for you an excerpt. In attempting this psychological presentation and a psychopathological examination of the typical characteristics of a concentration camp inmate, I may give the impression that the human being is completely and unavoidably influenced by his surroundings, in this case the surroundings being the unique structure of camp life, which forced the prisoner to conform his conduct to a certain set pattern. But what about human liberty? Is there no spiritual freedom in regard to behavior and reaction to any given surroundings? Is that theory true which would have us believe that man is no more than a product of many conditional and environmental factors, be they of a biological, psychological, or sociological nature? Most important, do the prisoner's reactions to the singular world of the concentration camp prove that man cannot escape the influences of his surroundings? Does man have no choice of action in the face of such circumstances? We can answer these questions from experience as well as on principle. The experiences of camp life show that man does have a choice of action. There were enough examples, often of a heroic nature, which proved that apathy could be overcome, irritability suppressed. Man can preserve a vestige of spiritual freedom, of independence of mind, even in such terrible conditions of psychic and physical stress. We who lived in concentration camps can remember the men who walked through the huts comforting others, giving away their last piece of bread. They may have been few in number, but they offer sufficient proof that everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. What Frankel is saying here is that although circumstantial factors cannot be discounted as far as their effects on individuals, one will always have some freedom of choice, even if it's as marginal as choosing one's attitude. So coming back to the present circumstances, one can start to be made aware of the many choices we still can and must make. Will we promote divisiveness and hate, or will we choose the oftentimes more difficult path of love? Frankel never advocated for some kind of an ultimate truth or definite meaning to life. He instead stressed a more postmodern outlook, stating, What matters, therefore, is not the meaning of life in general, but rather the specific meaning of a person's life at a given moment. This being said, though, he mentions a sort of spiritual experience that he had at Auschwitz as he was being marched to a worksite early in the morning. We stumbled on in the darkness 
over big stones and through large puddles, across the one road leading from the camp. The accompanying guards kept shouting at us and driving us with the butts of their rifles. Anyone with very sore feet supported himself on his neighbor's arm. Hardly a word was spoken. The icy wind did not encourage talk. Hiding his mouth behind his upturned collar, the man marching next to me whispered suddenly, If our wives could see us now, I do hope that they are better off in their camps and don't know what is happening to us. That brought thoughts of my own wife to mind, and as we stumbled on for miles, slipping on icy spots, supporting each other time and again, dragging one another up and onward, nothing was said, but we both knew, each of us was thinking of his wife. Occasionally I looked at the sky, where the stars were fading and the pink light of the morning was beginning to spread behind a dark bank of clouds. But my mind clung to my wife's image, imagining it with an uncanny acuteness. I heard her answering me, saw her smile, her frank and encouraging look. Real or not, her look was then more luminous than the sun which was beginning to rise. A thought transfixed me. For the first time in my life I saw the truth as it is set into song by so many poets, proclaimed as the final wisdom by so many thinkers. The truth, that love is the ultimate and the highest goal to which man can aspire. Then I grasped the meaning of the greatest secret that human poetry and human thought and belief have to impart. The salvation of man is through love and in love. Well, I think that's as good of a place as I can get to end the video. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it and were able to glean something from it. I know that it's very random for me to upload a video like this, especially it's been so long. Um, but I thought it would be more funny than anything else to like go from my old channel that I would upload Yu-Gi-Oh! and Minecraft Let's Plays on to a video that's such a serious topic. But, you know, I figure putting out uh, a word of encouragement during these times can never really be a bad thing. And hopefully you guys feel the same way. But that's pretty much all I have to say. Um, keep your guys' head up and definitely recommend checking out reading that book if you haven't. Again, it's Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. Thanks, guys.